Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to the Go Around with Crystal Experience Exchange, or Exchange for short. This is my opportunity to connect with other travelers over shared experiences. We collaborate by sharing our stories and discussing our observations about a certain adventure. Thank you for joining us. We're glad you're here. Today, I'm joined by Sydney Brown from Sydney Brown Travels. Hi. Hi. Uh, we got together to talk about Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Graceland is the home of none other than the iconic Elvis Presley. Uh, Sydney and I visited the estate together, uh, and we want to share our experience with you. Um, so just to kind of give you a little background, our tour started with the video. And then they put us on a bus over to the mansion. And then when we were done exploring that, we came back to the main entertainment complex. Um, so your experience might differ depending, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later, what that will look like. Um, so here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna roll a dice, that's it, a single die actually. Um, and Sydney's going to call out a number from one to six, uh, highs, Anywhere four to six, low is one to three. And that will determine who talks about what from our experience. So here goes. Call it out, Sydney. Two. <laughs> Two. Okay. We got six, which means okay. she's not right. So I'm going to start by talking about the things that we loved. Um, and then Sydney will talk about the things that, you know, maybe we didn't love or things that you need to be aware of. So first things first. Whew, was there a lot to see. <laughs> there was so much to see there. Um, and it was so exciting to the variety, really. So there's literally something for everyone from the mansion to the, the planes to, to just his whole everything, the costumes, the, the movies, the, the music, all of it. There was just so much to see and so much to do throughout this entire I didn't look up exactly how big this place is, but it's massive. I think it's several acres anyway. Oh, yeah. um, so the other thing is, um, again, I mentioned the history, the music. Uh, I know Sydney mentioned that she didn't know a whole lot about his history. Um, and there was just so much to learn and so much, even if you knew one piece, there was just layer on layer and layer of information that you couldn't help but feel like you knew him personally by the time you were done at this place. It was just, uh, it was just so well done. Um, I mentioned the mansion also, um, the nostalgia, uh, the feeling of walking into a time capsule because I don't know that they've touched it since he passed um, yeah. from the late seventies when the shag carpet, the paneling on the walls, the vintage <laughs> kitchen. So well preserved. Everything. It was so well preserved. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, and I just, in case you can't tell, there's a whole level of excitement that uh, that came with this experience that it was just, it was just so, so good. Um, you know, and, and not just for us. I mean, obviously we're adults, we're walking through this place, but it was good for families too. Really people of all ages, whether they grew up during that time or they lived during that time and they remember seeing him on TV, um, to the kids who are learning about him through these memories and to, to watch people react based on how they came to know about Elvis was just so neat to watch. Um, I think really it would be good for any group, any group that's traveling through through Memphis, it's it's definitely a, a good place to go. Um, we had, you know, I'm a foodie. <laughs> so I have to talk about what we ate. Uh, we went to Gladys's Diner. Um, and at one time there was several restaurants on this property. To my knowledge, only two of them are actually open right now. There was a steakhouse and then Gladys's Diner, which given the time of day that we were there was perfect for what we needed. And, you know, we had to try Elvis's favorite peanut butter and banana sandwiches grilled in bacon grease. This <laughs> is not the healthiest option, but that didn't make it any less delicious. Um, full on malts uh, made right in front of you. Uh, it might have been a little bit of overkill to go with the peanut butter banana one, but they do have it available if that's if that's what you want. Um, just so, so much good. 
Um, yeah. But you know, with everything, there's there's things that not everyone will love. Sydney, why don't you talk about that? <laughs> yeah. So. I think when it comes to Graceland, it's such a, a niche experience, right? Um, and so, as Crystal mentioned, I went into it not really knowing much about Elvis's life outside of his music and his discography. Um, and so, and I also didn't know a lot about what Graceland was as an experience. I didn't know um, what to expect really going in. So I had very uh, limited expectations and I kind of just went into it blind and I thought that was the perfect way to go into it. Um, but as Crystal mentioned, you know, let's talk about some of the things that might be seen as cons or maybe um, downsides to the experience. So the first one that, that we noticed that kept coming up um, was the price. And full disclosure, we were given free access with the understanding that we would share our experience with you, that we would talk about the good, talk about the bad, talk about it all. Um, and so something that came up a couple of times um, when we were talking to Uber drivers and people that live in the Memphis area is that it is pretty pricey um, to go and get a ticket to Graceland. And we were on um, specifically the Elvis Experience Tour, which is what it's called. And it's normally $77 per person um, with tax added on to that for guests ages 11 and up. Um, and there is an option to visit the Elvis Entertainment Complex and the Jets, but if you don't want to visit the mansion, um, that ticket is $48 a person for guests 11 and up. Um, so if you want the full experience, upwards of $77. Um, so just know that going in that this is, you know, a, a pricey excursion um, if you're visiting the Memphis area, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not worth it. As we're going to talk about, I think it definitely is worth it. Um, but that's just something to know going into it and to be prepared for. Um, and when you're going through the experience and you have the opportunity to um, get your photograph taken, things like that, those are added costs. So they aren't included in the ticket unless maybe you get the VIP experience package, which might include that. Um, and the second, uh, I guess, con, if you will, is there is a lot of information <laughs> to absorb. Like there is a lot. I will not downplay that by any means. Like going into it, especially from where I was sitting, you know, not knowing a lot about Elvis's life and kind of the backstory of how he came to be as popular as he was. I, there were certain points where I did feel a little bit overwhelmed and I was like, oh my goodness, there's so much to absorb. I have to just sit down <laughs> and like let everything ruminate and sink in. Um, and I, I love the whole experience, but I can see how it might be a little bit overwhelming um, if you're on information overload for several hours at a time. And I, I think that this is a good thing to think about if you're traveling there with kids. Um, you know, traveling with children, I feel like you have to take breaks, right? Like you have to pause and you have to let them kind of figure out and understand what's going on and what they're learning, what they're seeing, process everything. So I feel like if you're going to Graceland with kids, be prepared for that. Be prepared to take breaks, um, talk about what you're seeing, talk through the whole experience, because I feel like that would make it that much more enriching. Um, and the third thing that I didn't know going into this that we found out is that this takes a full day to experience Graceland. This is not something that, you know, if you get out of the airport off your flight and you have a couple hours before your next engagement and you're saying, oh, maybe I go to Graceland. No, this is a full day experience. Like you have to be prepared going into it with that mindset. Um, we got there around, I want to say like 1030, 1045 maybe in the morning. Um, and we didn't leave until almost 4 p.m. And we, you know, we did do the, um, the mansion, the entertainment complex, and the plane. So we did all of the stuff that was there, and we had lunch, um, and we took photos and all of the things. Um, so it did take us a full day. And it's not something that I think should be rushed. Like, you really do need to just go at your own pace, like, see everything for what it is take you know the time to to read all the plaques and everything like that um and there's a lot of walking that's the the fourth and final con um that we had both agreed on <laughs> kind of going into this talk is that there's a, a lot of walking you do get um transported via bus from the beginning of the tour which starts at the entertainment complex to the mansion um 
And that's a quick bus ride, no more than five minutes. You're on the bus. It's literally right across the street. But um, you walk through the mansion, which isn't that that bad. You know, like you're walking through the mansion and you're, you're seeing things. It's exciting. And then at the end of the mansion tour, it's an audio guided tour, um, you get back on the bus and they take you back to the entertainment complex. And this is where the walking really starts to, uh, <laughs> to kick in when you really start to feel the burn. <laughs> Um, because the entertainment complex itself is huge. Like, again, I, we don't know how big exactly in terms of square footage, but oh my gosh, you, it's a lot. It's a lot. You walk through, um, there's like a car collection. You get to walk through that. That's a huge, um, room in and of itself. And then there's multiple museums that are kind of, um, snaked through the complex and you get to walk, you can stay inside for most of it. Um, and walk through different corridors that they have, but there's a lot of walking. And then to get from the entertainment complex over to where the planes are, more walking. <laughs> so just be prepared for that, wear some good shoes, um, and you know, just be prepared to, uh, to take breaks, like I said before. Mm -hmm. awesome. So yeah, so those were some of the cons that um, you know, we agreed on, we kind of noticed throughout our time at Graceland. Yeah. And, and part of the walking too is, is if you took, if you didn't drive, if you took a ride share, um, yeah. that, that area is all the way back at the very beginning. So if you don't know that we ended up not knowing that and took an extra long walk all the way around just to come back to where we were, we were in the right place all along. Um, but you know, just things for you to know, just things for you to know. Um, and the other one too, that, um, I just thought of was, um, not taking video. This isn't um, unusual in a museum type setting, but just FYI, can't take video, but, but they allow your, your phones and regular cameras are fine, just not flash. Um, yeah. The other thing that I wanted to chat about was accessibility. Um, so obviously we are able-bodied um, people, uh, but it, even for us, it was a lot of walking. <laughs> we mentioned yeah. that a lot because it's a lot. Um, but they do have, uh, the entertainment complex itself is wheelchair accessible. Um, there are a few rooms in the basement of the mansion that obviously are not, um, and also the planes are not. Um, so if, if you have someone in your party that, that needs a wheelchair, um, just keep those things in mind. Um, also, one of the um, rooms in the entertainment complex is, I think it's a video um, yeah, of him singing sort of and an immersive experience where you yes. sit like in a concert hall type setting right and it is super bright we had to leave it was just these strobes that were super super crazy and there is plenty of warning it tells you when you walk in the door so you will know um which room this is immediately uh and um so there's that and then also uh, she mentioned that the audio tour it also has captions for anyone who may need or want those yeah. Um, another kind of disclosure thing, the upper level of the mansion is not accessible um, for, for visitors. Um, that's keep the family privacy, which we can all appreciate, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about experience um, or rather what your expectation was going in and then what your experience was and how is that different for you? Yeah, so I think for me, um, kind of like I mentioned a little bit before, I went in pretty blind to this experience. I didn't really know a lot about Elvis's life, his family. Obviously, I knew his music. Um, who doesn't know <laughs> some of the, the most popular Elvis songs? But um, yeah, going into it, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I was a huge, you know, Elvis fanatic or that I knew a lot about him. Um, but I mean, Graceland is one of those experiences where if you're in Memphis, it's something that you just have to do. And so going into the experience, again, I didn't know what to expect and I didn't want to, um, mentally set myself up for disappointment. <laughs> and, um, I was not disappointed at all. Like going through the whole experience, it was really, um, just such an immersive experience. And I felt like, I was living in the era of Elvis. Yeah. And I think that the museum does a really good job at making it feel like that. You know, they preserved the mansion so nicely, even the, the entertainment complex too. There were so many points where you could actually interact with certain exhibits. And I thought that was a really cool touch and especially for kids too. Um, so I really appreciated that. 
And also um, on the topic of, of food, I didn't really know what to expect either going into this. I didn't know it was going to be a full day thing. Um, but I'm really glad that they had dining options on property so that you didn't have to go, you know, interrupt your day and go off property and have to come back. Um, so it was nice that they had that available to people who wanted to take advantage of it. And I think the other um, piece of that puzzle that really surprised me was I didn't know that Elvis had his own private airplane. <laughs> I was like, there's airplanes? What is this about? And I, I was familiar with his car collection because I feel like that's one of the things that everyone kind of associates with Elvis is his cool cars that he used to drive around. Um, but for me, the airplane thing was totally just, I had no idea. And so going into that and seeing the airplanes and being able to walk through, and I don't want to spoil too much of it because if you're going to Graceland, it's really cool to just go into that experience blindly. Um, but yeah, those were some of my biggest uh, surprises and kind of how my expectations or lack thereof, I guess, aligned with uh, what the experience was like. Yeah, and, and I would agree. And I did have uh, maybe a little bit more background. I, I, I would call myself an Elvis fan, um, not, <laughs> not to the degree that I know some people are. Um, but here's yeah. the biggest thing for me. So when I, I went into it expecting, and maybe I was just setting myself up to not be disappointed, is I expected a super over-commercialized, kitschy uh, tourist attraction. That's yeah, what I was that's expecting. True. That makes that's sense. Completely what I was expecting. And that is not at all what I got. Yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, it was just so well done. Everything was... Um, from, you know, was there some cheesy merch? Of course there was, but in the same place, you know, there's probably six different gift shops with different, different items. There were some items that were really neat. They were so well done. The people in their merchandising are, are, are on their game <laughs> because there was some really neat um, memorabilia type pieces that, that really, um, that really stepped it up. The overall feeling I was not expecting. Uh, I was standing in front of the mansion and I just thought, how peaceful is this? There's just this calm over the whole thing. And, and obviously his shows were high energy. That's what he's known for, his flash and his flair. Uh, but really he was a man with a family who lived in this on this ranch uh, when he was home, obviously not entertaining, but there's a lot more to it. There was a lot more depth than I was really expecting. And I, I think positively, we talked about the price, that alone made it worth it. Being able to get that insider track and, and see him in that perspective, I priceless. I really think that yeah. was priceless. Um, and also speaking of the mansion, it was smaller than I expected. I had this vision of Graceland Mansion being massive, but I'm thinking of it from today's standards, not from what it would have been in the 70s. Uh, so at that time, it is big, uh, and you know all the all the cool <laughs> vibes that it has from the mirrors to the uh, everything was it was so well done. Again, I don't want to give it all away either. There was just some, just so much. Um, so, what was your favorite part of the whole thing? If you could pick one thing, what would it be? So I talked about the planes a little bit, <laughs> and I think that was definitely um, one of the highlights for me, just because I, again, I didn't expect it. I didn't really know what was going to be inside the, the aircraft, um, and it's really cool if you get the chance to go to Graceland and walk through it, um, definitely do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think, though, my favorite part would have to be the way that each um, not attraction, because I wouldn't say they're attractions, right? But mm -hmm. how each uh, kind of highlight or space within the experience complemented each other. Yeah. And obviously cost permitting, um, there are different ranges of tickets that allow you entrance into certain areas. Um, but if you can, and if you are visiting Graceland and you do have the extra money to splurge, I would say do the experience that we did that included the mansion, the planes, and the entertainment the entertainment complex. Um, and the reason for this is because going back to how, you know, it was part of my favorite part of the experience, um, it's really interesting and kind of cool to see how the curators of the museum 
tied everything together into a narrative, right? Like it wasn't, it wasn't as though you were going to a museum, seeing artifacts, seeing memorabilia, and then leaving. It was an experience that allowed you to walk through the life of Elvis and his family and feel like you're there. Um, and there were certain things in the, the mansion that were then brought up again in the museum and certain things in the museum that were brought up again in the planes, certain things in the planes brought up in the museum. So yeah. it was one of those things where I feel like to get the full true vision of what the museum is trying to convey, it really does um, benefit you as a, as a viewer to see all of it and kind of experience it for what it is. So that was my favorite part is being able to, to see how the curators of the museum were able to string that narrative through the whole property. For sure, for sure. Uh, and, and you already know what I'm gonna say, what my favorite part was. <laughs> uh she knew she just knew so I walked in and I could see some yeah. things over over some walls and I thought oh I bet that's gonna be neat I was not a, I was not ready I was not <laughs> ready I walked into this room actually let's let's be honest Sydney came running and said yeah. you've got to see this you've got to see this you're gonna love it I knew she you wasn't wrong I stood in front of there was a wall it was probably 30 feet tall uh yeah. and and just as wide if not wider full of records and awards and it was so inspiring and I just stood there just mesmerized by this wall of of accomplishments and how all this time has passed and he's still winning he's still mm -hmm. winning at life he's still winning with his music he's still um, gaining fans as we speak, uh, because he was such an icon and that whew, it's a little emotional. I still get emotional thinking about it because it's just so powerful. It was just a, such a powerful spot. Yeah. And I think in that room, and I, I could be wrong about this. So viewers don't quote me on this, um, <laughs> but there was something I remember seeing, um, like one of those placards that they had on the wall. And I think it said, um, one billion people have like an Elvis album of some sort. Oh, wow. Um, and I remember kind of turning to you and being like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of people. That's, that's like one in seven people in the entire <laughs> world. Has in the a world. <laughs> yeah. And that's not even the people like me who might not necessarily own an Elvis album, but have been uh, impacted by his music and by his legacy and it's just crazy to think of of how many people have truly been touched by his music and his impact on the industry and and just on the entertainment um kind of megaplex in general you know like he didn't just sing he was also an actor and just an entertainer in general and so I feel like those things combined thinking about the impact of Elvis and going through the whole experience at Graceland was really jarring it was like wow I had no idea that it was these numbers and this amount of people and this amount of albums this amount of records sold you know all of it so yeah that was a pretty cool moment it really was um so I'm thinking about the one thing that maybe caught me off guard the most of everything and, and maybe you have something like this too uh there's a room there's a racquetball room a racquetball room. I know that sounds totally off the wall, but it just made me think of sometimes the most random things are the ones that you remember. And I did not picture Elvis as a racquetball. And <laughs> I really did not. Um, but that's kind of just one of those extra little tidbits. Did you have anything like that that was just so random? Yeah, for me, um, and I think I might have mentioned this to you and to the people around us. So, and I don't want to give too much away in terms of, you know, what to expect or like what you're going to see on the tour itself but there was a specific room that I was like what the heck is this and it was um as you go through the mansion you know you go through the inside and then it leads you out to the back and you get to see everything that's back there um again not going to give too much away but there's a couple of different spaces that you get to explore um, through the audio tour and you know you can pause it too and, and walk on your own which is nice mm -hmm. um, but there was a room kind of attached to I think it was attached to the garage or it was it was odd it was some sort of office space um, that was outside and there was a small room and it couldn't have been any bigger than I don't know maybe like 12 feet long and 
like seven feet wide, not, not a big room. Um, and it said that it was a shooting range. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, like, number one, how's the safe? <laughs> number two, um, why, you know, like why this specific room, he has all this property. Um, and I just thought that was funny. And I, I remember just standing there and trying to think like, okay, if I were using this for what it said that it was used for, how would I feel? And I was like, you know, I probably feel pretty uncomfortable um, shooting <laughs> a gun in such a, an enclosed space. Like it was really small. Right. Um, and I don't know, you know, what type of renovations might have been done to that space to make it bigger or smaller or whatever. Um, I just thought that was really interesting. And they had a whole um, kind of display case that explained the history of that specific room and, and what was um, what the room had been used for in the past, because it wasn't always like a shooting range type of room. It had been other things before that and after. But yeah, that was, that was one of the things I was like, interesting, interesting. <laughs> We all have our quirks and those are the my favorite things to find the most random thing that's one of yeah. the things that I remember so uh, I remember the shooting range too after you mentioned it. Um, so any other final thoughts that you have I, I think we pretty much covered everything that without again giving everything away it's really important to us that you experience it for yourself and we just wanted to kind of give you a little background and on our, our experience. So. Yeah. I think um, one of the last things that you and I had spoke about that I think would be beneficial for people going to Graceland, um, there's two things actually. So the first is that it's really tempting once you like walk up to the entertainment complex and walk up to the mansion to want to just take photos and like yes. start taking photos, start, you know, doing poses, whatever. Um, but there's a lot of people when you get off of those buses. And so mm -hmm. our recommendation is wait a little bit, you know, maybe even after you've gone through the mansion, gone through um, the property, you know, wait till the end to take your photos because there's not going to be as many people around, especially later in the day, because right. most people, I feel like start the tour earlier. Mm -hmm. um, by the time we left, you know, 4 p.m. ish, there, there weren't that many people um, mm -hmm. coming into Graceland, you know, it was, it was pretty cleared out by the time we left. And so, that point, you know, we were able to get good photos, we were able to kind of have a clear background without any distraction. Um, so I would say that's one of the things I would recommend doing if you're going to Graceland and you know you want to get those iconic shots. Um, and just keep in mind too, again, Crystal mentioned, but no video. So if you're going with the intention of of doing a vlog or anything like that, not gonna work out. <laughs> but um, just something to keep in mind before you go. And then the second thing that I kind of wanted to just mention that I thought of as we were talk talking about it mm -hmm. was Crystal mentioned the gift shops and how many there are and how mm -hmm. varied the memorabilia and merch is. Um, don't get caught up in the first gift shop you see. <laughs> like nope. it's so easy to do that. And I'm, I'm, I do that all the time. Like, honestly, whenever I'm going to a, a museum or an attraction or anything like that, I love spending time in the gift shops and seeing what's available. Um, but because of the amount of merch available across the property, you're not going to want to spend all of your money in the first place, you know, like go through the, the complex, see what there is to purchase and what they have to offer, and then make your purchases at the end. Because also you don't want to be carrying around, you know, <laughs> bags and bags of merch. Yes. Um, I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, by all means, you can do that. But I know personally for me, um, it would have been a little bit of a hassle trying to manage everything and still be able to take photos and be able to like interact with the exhibits. Um, so I would say if you do want to purchase souvenirs, memorabilia, see all the stuff and then do it at the end right before you're going to leave. I would agree. I totally agree. Well, Sydney, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited for this collaboration and, and the chance to go to, through Graceland with you. Um, tell people where they can find you. Yeah, so I am on social media, pretty much every platform. Um, I'm on Instagram. So my handle is 
Sydney Brown Travels, just my name travels. Um, and then on Twitter, it's just Sid Brown Travels because of the character limits. Mm -hmm. um, and then my <laughs> website slash blog is sydneybrowntravels.com. So I post pretty regularly on there, um, also on Instagram and, and Twitter as well. So would love to connect with anyone who's on those platforms and hope that you know we can collaborate again in the future, Crystal. I hope so too. And I'll put all of that in the description below too. So you can make sure that to reach out to Sydney and, and check out her other information that she has available for you. So thanks for joining us and make it a great day.